Hey up everybody, welcome to Man in the Van, uh, episode three. This time, um, I'm gonna talk about the Mitch and MX Nationals from Ling this weekend, where I have the privilege to do all the commentary. So uh, let's talk about what went on there, shall we? Let's start off with the pros this week. Uh, Harry Kulas, again, just going 1-1, um, looking amazing on the DS Honda. I, I don't know anybody's gonna stop the freight train because he's just on fire in that championship. So confident, just picking his way through, Going to the front, race management, amazement, amazing. So he's he's looking good. Gert Krestinoff, um, he got a couple of bad starts, worked his way up. If Gert could just get a start, could he live with Kulas? I, I wish he'd get a start so we can know. Gert, please get a good start. And then in the third position over the weekend was uh, Lewis Toombs on the Bill Base Honda. Toombs, he's just doing so cool, since, so good since he's got on this big bike and uh, and got in that team and basically filling in for for Jake Nichols. So, uh, Toomsy, great work, mate. You're doing fantastic there. Um, I'm sure the team are proud of you. Right, in the MX2, this was something else. Um, Gilbert took the first race win, bar second. They're going at it in the championship, but the second moto, massive first turn crash. They went down, got hit really hard. Um, neither of them got up, or took ages to get up, so the race was red flagged. Um, Martin Barr eventually limped away. Josh had this, like, just all his face smashed in, and Basically had a bit of the old elephant man thing going on, all his face starting to puff out. I really hope you're feeling better today, guys. Um, so they couldn't make the start of the second restart, the moto. So it was an opportunity for a new winner, somebody that's never won a pro moto before uh, in the MX Nationals to step up to the plate. And that man was Ashton Dickinson. But my God, he was under some pressure in throughout the moto. First part of the moto, uh, in particular from Lewis Hall, who got right alongside him, tried to make a move, had a re massive rear end swap, went down. Incredibly, he got up, I don't know how, and got up really quick. Still came down in second place. Then started to hunt Dickinson down again, started to close, but then he had a rear wheel just go over the top of the berm slightly. He spun round, then all the other riders behind him went into him. Carnage. Anyway, it, anyway, once it all settled down, it was Ashton Dickinson who took his first ever pro moto win at the Michelin MX Nationals, and with it, the overall. Glenn McCormick came in second. Uh, so with some solid rides. Glenn, brilliant bit of sportsmanship, by the way, when you stopped uh, to see if Martin Barr was all right. Um, fair play to you, because you had no idea it was going to be red flag, so well done on that. And it was Michael Ellis who came in third in the end, um, picking up the pieces of the whole Lewis Hall carnage on the finish line where a load of other riders got caught up as well. So that was awesome stuff from the pros. In the expert classes, uh, Jason Mira cut above, four immaculate race wins, popping around on the pegs, looking amazing. Um, and he has now gone into the championship lead ahead of Gavin Stevenson. So Gav um, knows he's in a challenge now with three, uh, we're at the halfway stage basically. So, you know, Gav's got to try and get that red plate back. And Richard Bird came in third. Again, Richard fast, but he just a couple of bad starts let him down. In the expert MX2, Ben Clark, quality performance, just in a class of his own, even though he was pushed all the way in the opening moto by his teammate Joel Rizzi on the 125, literally like they were tied together with a bit of string. After that, Ben just got good starts and Joel found it hard to catch up. Uh, but Ben was immaculate, like maximum score, looking amazing. Aaron Lee Hansen came in third. Um, Aaron, if you could get some good starts, that would help. Oh, that's just, that's not criticism. That's just some advice, but I'm sure you know that because he charges on really hard at the end of the motos and it's good to watch. In the Clubman MX1, now the Clubman, just want to show you that. Look, look at the amount of riders there in the Clubman, just stacked. Um, full lineups, again, you guys are the absolute backbone of, of uh, this series, so fair play to you. In the MX1, Stephen Kelly, again, like Mira, just up on the pegs, taking all four race wins, perfect time. He didn't panic, wasn't it? didn't lead every lap, but he worked his way to the front every time. Bradley Madover, now, this guy uh, put a smile on my face this weekend because he was so pumped with his performance. This is his first ever podium finish, as I recall. His first ever couple of top three finishes in motos. He was so pumped when he crossed the line every time. And I'm thinking, that's what it's about, isn't it? You know, going racing at the weekend. That's whoever you are, pro or clubman, you know. You work hard for it. So well done, Bradley. That was that was good to see. And Harry Foster came in third in the MX1. Now, MX2, I've got apologies to make clubman MX2. Um, to Toby and Ben Lightbound, not Brown. Um, I've been calling you guys names wrong for about the last three or four years, so apologies for that. I've got to learn to read, clearly. Uh, Toby took his first ever overall, 
He is the uh, Bell brand manager at RFX. So Toby, um, I would get up this morning and treat yourself to a new crash helmet because uh, you deserve it. You rode awesome. Brad Thornhill took second. Um, he took a moto win and Elliot Cook came in third. In the MXY2, uh, Ike Carter basically extends his championship lead with three moto wins, but he was pushed all the way by Carl McNittle. McNittle? McNittle? Uh, McNichol, Carl, sorry. Um, solid ride from those two, you know, because Ike was charging on but made a little bit of mistakes and Carl was right there applying pressure all the time. Um, so it's good dust up between those two. Casey Hurd came in with another podium finish in third. Um, well done, Casey. Uh, on a personal note, riding for Team Green, nice one. Um, so he's he's in the mix there in the championship and we're at the halfway stage and anything can happen. So we're, that's an interesting one to watch. In the MXY1, it was Bobby Bruce who took the overall win and claimed some points back on Ryan Mawinney, who finished second on the Revo Husqvarna. Bobby's on the Crescent Yamaha, by the way. Um, so I can see these two going at it for the second half of the year. And Louis Kessel with a solid third on the Judd Orange Brigade machine. Um, good to see Louis out there and in the mix as well. Right, big wheel, 85s. Sam Atkinson, can't again, like Kulas, I can't see who's going to really, really challenge him. He... Um, he took three moto wins this weekend and a second in the other. Bailey Johnson was the guy that beat him in the other. And Bailey was so determined to win that race um, as they went off the big drop-off. They were side by side and Bailey just did a super aggressive move to make sure that Sam didn't get it done. And he was pumped with it. Bailey, that was aggressive, great stuff. Uh, but he came up a little bit short for second overall. Ollie Colmer, up and down weekend, super fast at times, but a few little mistakes. But it was good to have Ollie at the event uh, as he's doing a lot of riding in Europe and doing the European 85 CC championship. So Ollie, um, we wish you the best of luck with that. And finally, the small wheels, it was Tyler Hooley who took the overall win with two moto wins, but a couple of bad ones. He lost some championship points, but he still holds the championship lead. Keelan Hope, best weekend I've seen from him uh, with a solid second overall. He was really consistent, as was Bo Brown. So two riders that I don't think have ever been in the top three before. Fair play to you guys on a tough track. I mean, it was brutal. They were out after the pros, by the way, their final moto, and it was tough. Um, an honourable shout-out to Ben Musto on the Judd Orange Brigade uh, KTM taking a race win, and also Harrison Green off the Team Green taking a race win. But um, a couple of problems, and the others kept them off the box. Um, but that's not taking anything away from Keelan Hope and Bo Brown and certainly Tyler Hooley, who is um, still in the championship lead. And that was it. That was the Michelin MX Nationals. It was a cracking event. Um, their next round is, where's that? Canada Hikes in about four weeks' time. Looking forward to that. In the meantime, um, obviously, we've got the next Maxis British Championship round coming up in a couple of weeks, which is when I'll do the next man in the van. A quick little shout-out, because I'll try and keep this short. But uh, I watched the AMA. That was great. Um, just love the AMA stuff. It's just a different vibe from the GPs. I love them both, but the AMA just seems to have a slightly different vibe. Um, Roxham, what can you say? Just amazing. Um, doing it again. Coming back from where he's been just to ride a bike is incredible. And um, I, I, just the respect I've got for him. Like, similar to Mel Pocock to come back from what he's come back and, and all that's unreal. So awesome from him to do that. Cincerillo, good to see him bounce back after that kick in the teeth of losing the championship. AMA is 250 is going to be amazing. Both classes are going to be brilliant. GP in Portugal. Well, Geyser, Caroli, I hope that rumbles on all year. Yeah, you know, I, my money is on uh, TC to do it for a tenth time. But I don't know, you know, I said that at the start of the year. Now Geyser, he's, he's sort of, yeah, he's, I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be interesting to watch. Um, great to see Tonus get a third good to see him bounce back because he's an incredible talent that has basically um been through the ring with injuries so it's good to see that prado it's it's going to be predictable i mean for him to get back in the championship lead so quick after that time off he's going to be hard to stop but at the same time it's not going to be boring because prado is so good to watch but you never know dear motocross a lot can happen but um he's clearly the rider to beat and the others deep down i think know it so but um that's that. And then uh, Jacoby. I love watching him ride. He's just like a sledgehammer coming through the back. So good. Um, you got to love you got to love Henry Jacoby. I think he's amazing to watch. So it was a good ride from him. And then Mitchell Evans, of course, you know, coming over from Australia, doing the GPs and getting, getting on the box, getting up to speed. So it was good to see Mitchell 
on the podium as well. And I'm going to end this one, Man in the Van, with a huge shout out to my buddy, Todd Kellett. Um, TK, what can I say? Um, just a proper trooper. Heart of a lion kind of stuff. You know, to have the end of your finger chopped off last week. Um, and then to just even contemplate, go out and ride and do what you got to do. And then put it on the box uh, in the EMX two-stroke championship. It's something else. Um, yeah. I don't, you know, mad as a March hare. You Kellets are as mad as a March hare. That's all I got. All of you. Raving lunatics. Um, but I've got so much admiration for, for that. So well done, Todd Kellett. Um, you know, I hope to see you soon. Um, you can give me the bird if you like. I can't remember which finger you've had done. Um, but anyway, Todd, amazing. And on that note, I'm going to sign off right there. And um, that's it. That's Man in the Van episode three over. I will see or catch up with you guys in a couple of weeks' time. Right. Um, I'm going to go off for a mid-afternoon snooze. I'm not really. Well, I might. I might. Anyway, catch up with you soon.